It's been crazy. Um, as you know, um, I have been at Concordia Irvine as the president for about 100 days now. I could have never imagined that my first 100 days when we were thinking about how we were going to uh, articulate that for our alumni magazine. I can't imagine um, that even 30 days ago, we would have imagined that there would be a worldwide pandemic that would have, uh, would have marked this. Um, so it's been, um, it's been, um, it has just been an, a, an amazing ride in the sense of we don't know what's coming each day, um, every day. Well, I'll kind of talk you through what we've been doing as a, as a leadership team. So one of the most amazing things at Concordia University Irvine is the, is the team of 22 people that we put on a COVID-19 task force so blessed that God has provided these amazing leaders that have all leaned into this. Uh, we have truly leaned into every issue that's come our way. Um, we've, we've worked the problem and some days we're on the uh, conference calls for three, four hours. Um, and the, the most amazing part is, and this is probably true across the country. I know it's true at most universities. We would have a two hour meeting in the morning would work through a very detailed agenda, really difficult decisions, work way, our way through it. And then we'd go off and the various teams would work on various solutions, various ideas. I'd work with uh, Marcom to come up with a plan. We'd then work on a communication strategy, release it, an hour later it was completely obsolete. And then we'd do the whole thing over starting the next morning. And uh, that's really been the last uh, week and a half to two weeks is, uh, coming together as a team, a really complete full agenda, working through it, um, um, really wrestling with um, balancing the reality of some of the difficulties of what we're having to uh, make decisions about, but also trying to be hopeful, trying to also plan for the future, but not having the details, not having the, uh, uh, the kind of information that we'd like to have to be able to make really good decisions. So we just do what we can with the information we have. We take a cut at it. We vet it. We work on it collaboratively. We pray over it. And then we, uh, we, we release it. And then the next day, we do it all over again. But that has been absolutely remarkable to work with the team that God has put in place here. Um, I've been so blessed to be a new leader that walks into a team of 22, 23 people that are that are faithful, that care, that love, that think deeply, that wrestle, we collaborate. We don't always agree, but we'll throw a, I've been using the analogy of we put the cube in the middle of the table and we turn it all eight ways. And then after we're done with that, cubes of eight, no, cubes of six. <laughs> turn it all six ways, maybe turn it eight. And then, um, and then we wrestle with that. And uh, then we make a decision and we don't always come to a unanimous decision, but I would say that 90% of the decisions we made have been unanimous. Um, some people hold their nose and vote, but um, yeah, there's been some tough, tough decisions. One of the things that probably the most difficult decision was last week when we, um, we had realized we had tried for several days to maintain the, um, the residence halls in their full capacity, keeping students here. We had heard from many, many students that they wanted to stay on campus, they wanted to continue their studies. But we had already, um, even earlier in the week, um, had notified the faculty that we might be taking face-to-face -face classes online. If you remember back, it's only been 10 days or so, uh, when the phrase social distancing first hit the, hit the, um, the airwaves, so we talk, started talking about social distancing and what that would mean for classes. So we started to prepare the faculty that we might be moving face-to-face -face classes online. But our intention at the time, it seems so naive now, but our intention at the time was to keep the residence halls open, keep the food service open, maybe shift to online classes. We were still wrestling at the time what to do with labs and other things like that. But it became obvious after the uh, mayor of San Francisco locked down the city of San Francisco, we knew that it was just a day or so before that would happen in Orange County, but also would happen across the state of California. Governor Newsom has been really out in front 
in terms of leaders around the United States. And so we knew that he would make some difficult decisions from the governor's office. So after a few days of kind of every day having to recalibrate what we were doing vis-a-vis -vis the students and the residence halls, we finally just came around the table and I made this statement, we just, we really need to give people clarity. And we knew that it was gonna be a hardship on students, it was gonna be a hardship on our employees, and it was gonna be a hardship on, on parents getting their students home. But we knew that it was the right decision for the health and safety of our students, faculty, and staff to make this decision. So we did, we, um, we uh, talked about it collaboratively, we talked about the different aspects of, of how that would unfold and um, the financial impact it would have on the university as well as impact on students moving home and not sure if they would have connectivity, that they have laptops. Once you close down a residence hall and move classes online and you do it in the span of three or four days, the dominoes that fall are, are, are quite amazing. The things that you have to think about, how are students gonna move home? What if they, don't have the access to a truck to move all their stuff. So we have to think about storage and laptops and connectivity and providing funds to students to purchase laptops if they don't have one. So um, yeah, that was, uh, that was a very difficult decision, but it was the right decision because in the end, we knew it was for the safety and health and welfare of our students, staff and faculty. And we knew that we wanted to be a little bit ahead of the curve um, and it just so happened that we voted that morning uh, to go ahead and shut the residence halls. And um, we thought we might be ahead of the curve by a couple of days, but by that afternoon, Orange County issued a decree and by the next morning, Governor Newsom had as well. So uh, we knew we'd made the right decision, even though it was uh, very difficult. Yeah, so I'll start, I'll start personally. Um, so uh, when I received this call to serve as the president of Concordia University, Irvine, it somewhat came out of the blue for me. I won't get into the details about how, how uh, universities associated with the Lutheran Church picked their next president, but um, I was nominated and applied and I walked through open doors. And um, after the process took place and I was selected to serve as the fifth president of Concordia University, Irvine, I knew that God wanted me here. It was so clear. The, the, um, the clarity of the divine call for me to serve in this capacity has been absolutely clear from the moment um, I received the, the phone call. So I've had no doubt, other people may have doubts, but I have no doubt that I'm supposed to be serving in this role, that God wants me here. That has provided me a great deal of, of hope and also a great deal of um, confidence, not in arrogance, but a confidence that I'm supposed to be in this role at this time with this, with this team of leaders. And so that's been really helpful for me personally, because I will tell you that um, with the uncertainty of the, of the events unfolding around the coronavirus, it hasn't always been clear where we're supposed to be going or what path we're supposed to be taking. But um, we start every meeting with prayer or with the devotion. We um, constantly are reminding each other on the phone call that um, while we're dealing with difficult decisions, that we are a Christian institution, we're a Lutheran Christian institution, and we put the welfare and the, um, the um, safety of our students, faculty, and staff first and foremost, and that we, we really believe that this is a divine calling to lead this institution as a Christian institution. So we have been leaning into these decisions, not just operationally, not just in terms of financially and what's good for our students and um, uh, what other universities would do. But we, we take a mindset that says that we are here to love God and love our neighbor. And we are trying to make decisions that connect to the spiritual well-being of students as well as their physical and financial well-being. One other comment about that. One of the things I'm most proud of that we've done over the last week is um, the Christ College faculty, which is the theology faculty in partnership with campus ministries and in partnership with a lot of other people on campus have put together spiritual care teams. These spiritual care teams are, um, they're ready 
to assist um, not only students, but staff and faculty and the families of students with any spiritual care needs they have. We don't know exactly how this virus is going to unfold and what the impact it will take on, on students and their families. But we knew, we knew right away that we needed a spiritual care team that could, that could um, be there for students. Students are asked to reach out. We have created a special email account, prayers at cuy.edu. Students are encouraged and their families to reach out to us. We have a team of people ready to receive those requests. If students want to have spiritual care from an ordained minister, we're ready to help in that way. If students just want to reach out for prayer, they just want someone to talk with, these teams are in place, and I'm very proud of that. The other thing we've done is we've tried to maintain our spiritual discipline of offering chapel four days a week. Now, clearly, we can't offer chapel face-to-face, -face, but we are offering it in, a, in an asynchronous podcast that's available um, on our website. So I'm very proud of the fact that we've maintained our spiritual disciplines and our spiritual care for one another, even if we're now online. I think that the lesson I've learned most as a Christian leader is that, first of all, we have no clarity. The only clarity we have is that God is with us and God will see us through. We had an amazing a short prayer and devotion this morning by one of our deans who actually, um, provided such a helpful insight. He, as he was praying, he said, you know, during this time, we're not always sure where we're supposed to go, but if we're faithful and if we're trying to do the right decision for our neighbors and for our faculty and staff, if we're trying to do the right thing and think about their well-being, that when we get through this crisis, and we will, we will get through this crisis as a community, a community that cares and loves for one another deeply, when we get through this crisis, we will look back. Maybe it's a year, maybe it's two years. We'll look back and we'll see Christ directing our decisions as we, as we look back through the decisions we made. We realize that when we are in a room, 20, 22, 24 of us, we are, we are not just gifted leaders um, because we're good human beings, but rather we believe fundamentally God has put each of us in our roles and our vocations. And with that confidence, we have no confidence in information we're receiving because it changes daily. But we have ultimate confidence that the 20 of us, 24 of us around the table are all there because God has asked us and sent us to serve in those vocations at this time. And so with that, right, as a good Lutheran Christian understanding of what grace means, um, God has put us there, given us the talents and the skills to, to serve in those vocations currently. And we hope and pray that through that collaboration and serving as a Christian community and asking God every day in prayer for guidance, that even though we're, we're fallible humans, we will make the decisions that God will take and turn this to the way he would like the outcome to be. And I think in a year or two, we'll look back and we'll see that we had made mistakes, but largely we will see um, the hand of God guiding what we've done. It, we don't see it now. Of course, we can't see now. Clearly, as Paul says, we see through a glass darkly, but then we shall see face to face. And for us, we shall see in a couple of years God's hand on these decisions. God willing.